mute on what what's my other my thing yo if you guys have any idea what's been going on the last couple of hours so let me just tell you that when i went off frame this is gonna be weird but i just came from an event mm -hmm. and i wasn't wearing any pants so then when i had to get up to see what was wrong with the sound i didn't have any pants on so yeah all right guys <laughs> welcome <laughs> to another episode of mostly peaceful latinas we've been missing for a few day weeks we've Two actually weeks. been traveling as you guys saw we were on the Hopefully pop cultural crisis some support yeah we, we were in the middle of nowhere virginia last week which was actually really interesting and cool to see how other americans live when we actually have funny stories between two uber drivers that we encounter an african man and a white man i'll let you guys tell me in the comments who you think was more based and more pro-america and um the week before that i was in Baghdad, uh america uh which is st <laughs> like, louis america <laughs> i was in iraq uh also known as st louis missouri for the andy for sala podcast and that's interesting because i got to see how an american city would turn like a middle eastern uh bombed city and that would be st louis and i was working out inside of the first form gym when an influencer i didn't know he was an influencer like huge influencer approached me and he was like you know talking to me and he's like you know i was stationed in iraq for nine years and i can tell you right now that this city it's very similar to that of wherever i was stationed in iraq and i was like i knew it you had already just said that already you, said had, that. you had literally told me had, on the uber yeah, ride that this had, was the case i had already said that um and yeah so so it's interesting what's happening in the american cities but we are back and um no we're good joey thanks but no thanks we'll pass it you go we should go to portland thanks but no thanks i'm going to washington I was there. i'm going to washington i'm just not going to portland i was there in 2018 no and it was actually a a, a it's really beautiful very beautiful i went hiking for like eight miles but the city is trash. The people are mean and they're just like ugly and we're I've told you before horrible. that also the problem is that like we're very spoiled because we're right. in Miami and like there's beautiful people everywhere. There's good food everywhere. There's like our politics technically are not that shitty. You know, you've got like the, the Cubans and the Venezuelans and the Colombians here, which don't believe in communism. So we're just really spoiled is yeah, the reality. But guys, we are back from hiatus. Um, a lot of things are happening for MPL. So we're in a little bit of a of a transitionary period, but we've got a lot of exciting things. We are uh, currently going to be taking a hiatus from our sponsors as well until we kind of figure out where we're going with the production of the show. So in the meantime, Mostly Peaceful Latinas is 100% self-funded, no Illuminati, no lizard people, just you guys. Um, luckily, we don't have to put out videos like, what's her name? Candace Owens recently put out a video. What this did she say? Saying that she wasn't Illuminati. Oh God! Well, she's <laughs> addressing the rumors so. that she was a controlled opposition Illuminati. <laughs> um, Let's give a quick shout out to those that have shown us support consistently week after week and help us keep the lights on here. Adam, thank you so much. Evening, ladies. So happy to see that MPL's back and running again. Congrats to Linda for sur surviving Midwest Baghdad. <laughs> you ladies did a great job representing last week. Hope you're okay, Bella. I'm good, Adam. Thanks for asking. Other than the fact that I fell before the show started and it was, it's not that I fell, it's how long it took me to hit the floor because of all of the different dynamics dynamics I was doing before I, I actually hit the ground, which I did. And thank you, Stacy. Hi, ladies. I missed you, too. The board is giving me Jeopardy vibes. I'll take holes for 500, please. I'm glad that you mentioned the board behind us, Stacey, because this is where our show is starting today. So yesterday, after a very successful school board meeting where the Miami-Dade school board voted on whether or not to enact October as LGBT History Month, uh, we had significant turnout. The meeting itself went up until one o'clock in the morning where they actually voted against the item. So we will not be having Pride Month 2.0 in Miami. But... While we were actually watching the school board meeting, Linda had, where were we originally inspired by? 
We were inspired by the Colombian Congress. Uh, yes. So yesterday, if you saw my Instagram story, I was talking about a Colombian congressman. His name is Miguel Polo Polo. He's one of the youngest congressmen, 27 years old. Um, what we like to call Afro Latino. So he's you know a little bit a darker Colombian. And um, why the, the reason why I say that is because my mom was telling me how he's always fighting with the VP who's black. Like we're not oppressed. Like look at me. You know, like she was. You know, the, the same racial Same, fights like, that we have here. that we see so here. anyways um this guy was was in a, on a twitter fight with the president's son because he was um there was a picture of him kissing some girl's butt and it was actually yeah on a standard yacht was colombian. A standard colombian you know just a regular day on the yacht in cartagena <laughs> and uh you know i guess the caption said something like oh this is who wants to be like the future the future president you know it was a, a leftist youtuber kind of kind of trashing this guy and um he says he's like well you know first of all like i always kiss him like it's always consensual this was before um you know this this picture was before i became a congressman and you know i'm not like your father who's like abusing like women rights yada 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 and so you know i i post this on instagram and i said as if we're supposed to believe that now that you're in power, you have less hoes. And it's funny because then I go on Twitter and I see that there's more beef between the Colombian's president's son and this guy and how this guy had a status on his Instagram little story, like status, um, telling girls that he had a yacht available and to come on the yacht if they were in Cartagena. So, so the, the whole inspiration being- is of my chart, which I will explain in a little bit, is how as you have more power, right, you get more hoes. But there's a lot more. There's a lot more to this chart. There's a lot of intricacies intricacies involved in this chart because as we're building the chart, we start realizing that a lot of the power dynamics that we see within (sighs) the RP movement go back to this chart. And not understanding... The dynamics, not understanding. The power, I, the power I mean, chart. Just for for a quick example, the, the the problem with the RP space is that they're they're, they're right here. No, like, let's not get into that. Hold on. Okay. Let, 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 let's let's not let's not. Well, get let's into get into right the now. conversation. So yeah. yes, we're going to talk about the chart, but the chart is going to be relative to what the story we've been following for a few weeks now, which is the uh, Logan, Logan Paul. Paul. Sorry, the Logan Paul and Nina uh, and Nina Agdal story. Uh, for those of you that watched our last couple of episodes, you heard us talk about it. Logan Paul, famous streamer, YouTuber, and a boxer, uh, recently got engaged to supermodel Nina Nina Agdal. Uh, a Dennis Dylan Dennis Dylan Dennis. Uh, they have a fight coming up in October. Correct. And Dylan Dennis has just been basically trolling uh, Logan Paul through his fiance. Um, showing all of the men that she has uh, dated, showing men that she has photographed, oh, trolling with, her by, by trolling her, basically trolling her, 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 setting that, she's, that her. she's a slut and that they're getting married and that he's marrying a slut. And then he's done so by sharing all of these pictures of anybody, any picture they could find of her with any kind yeah. of man. And then sharing the message that she is sleeping with these men, that she's a whore, that she's whatever it is. Mm. Um, but what ended up happening yesterday is that she actually sent a cease and desist letter few days ago asking Dylan Dennis to stop defaming her and he didn't he continued he actually it escalated pretty badly I think at first it was funny um but then it's not anymore because you cry you cross the lines of harassment and bullying and you know everything else and so yesterday we find out that Nina Agda has actually filed a restraining order against Dylan Dennis and also um, a lawsuit against them uh, claiming that some of the X-rated pictures and videos that he posted on X or formerly known as Twitter were actually inside of her Snapchat vault or archive. And there was no way of him getting it if it wasn't because someone somebody me. leaked it or he inappropriately got it or somebody broke into her phone and got it. Um, and so now he is actually going to be facing federal charges. And um, let me tell you guys something. I am not sure how much this is going to hold up in court, like the restraining order, because there is such thing as free speech. So it depends on what she has alleged. We haven't. I actually had my friend who is a process server look into the lawsuit to see if we can get it before the show. But he just didn't know where it was filed. It was actually filed in New Jersey. I found out like 30 minutes before the show. So I haven't spoken to him. Um, But 
what's what's really gonna fuck him or screw him sorry it's gonna be the defamation stuff because cardi b already set a president so if you guys don't know cardi b won a four million dollar lawsuit against a blogger that was lying about her for years and they didn't think it was gonna go anywhere because freedom of speech and that actually set a legal president where you can't win a lot of money for defamation so that's that. Cardi, Cardi set the role. Cardi, Cardi, Let's yeah. take a minute before we go into the chart, guys, and kind of that area of the oh. conversation, just to give a huge shout out to you guys showing us support, Seriously. particularly in this transitionary period um, where we've respectfully bought out with the uh, with the sponsors until we can kind of figure out this production thing. Thank you from the bottom of our heart for helping us keep the show going. Adam says, evening, ladies. So happy to see MPO back and running again. Congrats to Linda for surviving Miss Midwest Baghdad. You ladies did a great job representing last week. Hope you're okay, Bella. Oh, wait, we already read Adam. Sorry, Adam. We already read this. I don't know why I read you again, but there you go, twice. Erica, thank you so much for coming through with a donation and tuning in week after week. Our boy David Bird comes through and he says, excited for this one. Great job on Priscilla and Pop Culture Crisis past few weeks, but glad to have you both back on MPL this week. Also, Thank love you, my free my boy tea. I haven't told you the story. So Did might you as well get tell it? you live. By the way, if you got it, I'm so sorry. If you got it, please tag me so I can share you on my story and people could see the free my tea. Can I tell you how I wore the shirt to the to you didn't the tell concert me. You on didn't Sunday? Tell me. So I no. went to the uh slightly stupid sublime concert in West Palm Beach and I wore the shirt. Everyone stopped me to no, ask stop me it. about like everyone, even the people who I thought were like BLM were stopping me and be like, You've got the dopest shirt here. Because it is the dopest shirt. Let me take it's a picture so of you. Let me stop. So the shirt was an absolute hit at the concert, as I imagine it's an absolute hit. I'll also tell you guys that Linda wore this shirt in the DC airport on our <laughs> way back. Mm -hmm. Make of that what you wish. Mm -hmm. But that was her political statement was that she did, in fact, wear the Free My Boy t-shirt in the DC airport. In the motherfucking gulags, bro. <laughs> in the Biden gulags, bro. As DHS is like, Mallorca's is right there. Like, hi, I'm blah, 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 Mallorca's. You're a Department of Homeland <laughs> Security. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, we were getting ready in the morning, and I'm like, Linda, you're not gonna wear that shirt to the airport, are you? Like, and she's the like, fuck the fuck I am. I am. Yeah, I am. But wait, and then we found like a a, a screen that was like showing pictures of the Capitol and stuff like that. And it took us like 10 minutes to get a picture, and she's like, quick, go. And so I'm trying to get in the screen. It was like a slideshow, so and then funny. it had like the Washington Monument and the the White House and all of these the scenery from from DC. But of course, we wanted to be who we are. So we wanted to wait until the picture of the Capitol came out. Anyway, she did get the picture. So hopefully she'll post that on the page. Um, All right. And our last, thank you so much, David, for coming through. We appreciate you. And thank you, Leah. She says, Dylan fixating on Logan and Nina's relationship and trying to break them up shows how miserable he is. Also, Linda's whole chart is on point. It is. Let me tell you guys a little bit about this, the the, the Dylan the and Logan fixation. Oh, okay. Um, It's been... I, I, I'm left speechless. She doesn't have the words. I'm left speechless <laughs> with the fact that the RP Boros and Pearl, uh -huh. the RP Bros, truly thought that they were going to shame Logan into breaking up with Nina. Like it, it baffles me that user three six seven nine really thought that if they said enough mean things about Logan, that he was going to break up with his fiance. Um, what's actually hysterical is that I would imagine that quite the opposite is currently happening. I'd actually wouldn't be shocked that that lawsuit is being paid for by Logan. Probably his lawyers are the ones who drafted that up. I wouldn't be surprised if she's getting extra coquitas and extra hugs and extra presents and extra attention because the controversial figure in that relationship is Logan Paul, not Nina. That's and right. Nina has never had to deal with this before. In fact, if you watched their podcast together, one of the things that she made mention of was how she didn't want to date him because he was such a controversial figure before they started dating. And now here they are all these years. They did. Well, I don't know years. I don't know how long they've been dating it's for like a year. Um, you know, this year later that they've been dating. Now they're engaged. There's an engagement, a wedding now that's going to be planned. And she's getting hate and bullies that she's never she's never dealt with this before. She also shared on that podcast that she deals with anxiety, that she deals with depression, that these are things yeah. that she battles. So she had never been bullied 
until until, until she re- says until that she hasn't been right, bullied until a- this recent situation yeah. she had never experienced bullying before in her entire life so let's be quite frank um i don't care what the rp says about the delusion that they live in on the internet world in the real world when a man that loves a woman sees her going through that kind of hurt because of him because of something he caused, because of his reputation, the way that he used to live his life, I promise you that that man is blaming himself for everything that they're putting Nino through. And the only thing that the RP is accomplishing is that she's being lifted up at an even higher pedestal than she already was by the man that asked her to marry her with a ring that was a couple million dollars. Yeah. So that, so I'm going to explain to you guys this, this, uh, this chart right here. And the reason why... This chart is important is because it also visually represents where Nina falls in which category, why Logan Paul sees her as a prize, despite the fact that men on the Internet think that she's a whore. She's ran through. um, She's too old and uh, he could do better. But there's reasons why Logan actually thinks that she's the prize. So let's get to this. By the way, by the way, I put pants on. (laughs) Let me see the shot. How do I look? I think we might have to lift it up a little bit just so that. Oh, you okay. guys see it? No, I, I think if you don't see the, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, it's a little for. Uh, or maybe we can just get the cam. Maybe we can get the laptop pointed right at the. What? But what? No, don't do it. Don't. But just one with the camera. No, she's not. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. What do you think? Let me get I out think of the it's chat. Fine. Let me get out of the oh, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me take the Just go super up a chat. Bit. Let's go up a little bit. Can you guys see the chart? I think that's perfect, yeah, right? Yeah. All right. So we got power right here. We got hose right here. All right. And this was actually, we were like playing around in my apartment yesterday. Like this was actually mm-hmm. a conversation between her and I. We were never intended to show this to the general public. For educational purposes, this was actually a joke. Just us brainstorming, just us brainstorming, breaking down the whole situation. So you got uh, your average man right here, and then I'm gonna explain to you. Obviously, on the top we have people like Trump, people like Leonardo DiCaprio, who's like the ultimate bachelor. Um, you have Ye. People were asking why is Ye up there? Well, he's the first black billionaire, for example. He's a genius, and he had he married Kim Kardashian, who, despite whatever you guys may think, is still Kim Kardashian, and she's gonna go down history probably be as famous as controversial for the beauty standards like Marilyn Monroe. I know people don't like to hear that, but that's actually what's going to happen. Um, and so from there we go down. Um, it's the- very important to recognize that what we want yeah. to show is that the more powerful you are, the more access, the more access you get to host. Now, right. important emphasis on the whole part. This right. is for you men that are searching for hoes not necessarily good virgin women right hoes right exactly right so so that's the other thing to uh, and by the way do i need to hold this up because this is kind of cool do i need to hold this up you guys let me know in the chat so basically we have your average men right that's where most people are most people are average there's absolutely no reason why we should think the average is bad because it's not bad but there you go into people who are ceos you have doctors you obviously have uh, people that are more famous. I put here reggaetoneros. If you live in Miami, you could see Jay Balvin. You could see Bad Bunny. You could see Nicky Jam. It actually happened to me two weeks ago or three weeks ago. I went to the basketball party at 9 o'clock, and Nicky Jam was playing basketball with his boys. It's Miami. One time I walked into my gym, Jay Balvin was work- working out right next to me. It's just what it is. You have rappers. You obviously have uh, before that, before the famous people, you're going to have people like politicians. You have entrepreneurs, people that you may not know who they are, but they do have a lot of money. And then over here we have empower, obviously, because that's the thing with a lot of money comes power. And um, on the very top, obviously, you have Trump. So what do you have when you get to the very top? Right. You have supermodels. If you're Tom Brady, you're dating Giselle. Does do you if you're the average man, do you have access to Giselle? No, you don't. If you're the average woman, do you have access to Donald Trump? No, you don't. The same thing with Kanye West. Where does the problem lie as to why men are so pissed off at women on the internet, particularly women like Nina and Val? Well, that for women, it's a little bit different because you have your average woman and the average man, right? And by the way, we put drug dealers right here because as you guys know, there's like some women that really like to date drug dealers and a lot of drug dealers 
could be hot. Uh, they have swag, they have risk, they have money. People so are people are street. scared of them in the streets. They're definitely above crypto bros. They're, the, they're above crypto bros. We put the crypto bros in the back because they're crypto bros and they're kind of like, you already know they got like scammed. So they're just like the R word. It's I don't want to say power. the right. It's exactly. Power on inside of a exactly. USB drive. But what's important here is that you, as you guys know, if you're a man, you actually have to work hard to go up the scale. And it doesn't mean you have to. Like, not everyone's going to be a Trump or a Ronaldo or Brady or a rapper, an NBA. Like, that. it doesn't matter. Because even right here, as an average man, if you're making it, who cares? You have your beautiful wife. There's beautiful women. But here lies the problem. That women, that women don't have to work hard to be able to access some of these men. What do I mean by that? Your hot Instagram hottie, your thotty that's showing her ass. I actually put here an example. For example, there's a girl, Katia Lees. She is the baby mama of a NBA player, Tyler Harrow from the Miami Heat. All she had to do was be hot, show her ass, and go down the DM of a very wealthy and of NBA player, right? She didn't, I mean, she is wealthy on her own. She does have her own brand and stuff like that, but it doesn't matter because she's hot. So even if she's, she, even if she doesn't have the money, she could still gain one of these rappers just because she is a hot girl. Now, what is happening that you have people like Nina Agdal, she's not a supermodel Giselle, right? She's not Giselle. She's not Adriana Lima. She's a hot girl. She's a supermodel. She falls right around here. But then she has had access to Leonardo DiCaprio, right? She dated him for a year. Logan Paul was once here as a streamer and influencer. Now you could be considered that Logan Paul went up because he's in the sports arena. He's worth $19 million is what we saw yesterday, right? Nina's worth $12 million. So she's not that poor, like people are saying, she's a huge gold like digger. A gold digger. Like, like, she wasn't a so think, of, so model. think about it for a second. If this girl once had access to this top tier, right? Why would she not stick around this neck of the woods and then go down to this category right here, which is Logan Paul? Do you do you see why this guy that went from here being a streamer and an influencer and a YouTuber? that went up here will think that the girl that once was sleeping with Leonardo DiCaprio, which is like top, top power is the prize. Does, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Now, now the people, the people are people making sense of that this because I can't read the now, chart. It's very important. It's very important here. This area right here. I want you guys to focus here in this blue section right here. That's, Somewhere between the average man right. and the crypto bros, and and this and is the yeah, this is poverty. This is a limited whole. This is a limited access. whole access area. Right. This so. area right here is limited whole access. So part of the problem that we have with the RP space, part of the problem that we have with the RP space is that most of the RP incels exist right, right here. here. This you area, guys are right here. This area right Hi. here of limited whole access. So when I hear RP guys saying something like uh, Nina is a mid. Right. Or Nina, she's worth $12 million, Nina's by the a, way. Nina's a four <laughs> on her best day. When I hear RP guys that exist here say that about somebody like Nina, it's the necessity for a chart like this. To remind motherfuckers of their fucking place. Exactly. Because you will fall right here. And here's the problem. Like, for example, Fresh and Fit had a video the other day. Um, and they're right here, right? So they got money, but they're still like, they don't got that much power. Like, they're not getting invited to the coolest Art Basel events in Miami. They're probably not that friendly with Dave Grutman and people who actually matter in the city. However, for some odd reason, Tim Pool the other day decided to say something like this. Uh, Fresh and Fit Boys were in the studio, and I guess they were discuss this discussing the issue of body count, which body count matters. We know that it's better if you are more pure, like on on like end of discussion. Great. Um, the problem is when Tim Pool says, "Well, these guys are like the voice of authority because they live in Miami and they drive a Ferrari and they're rich and they get girls. What type of girls, my boy? That's the problem, right? right? Because let's go, back. let's go back because the type of girls." That these and streamers. I, I want to make sure that you guys can read this because I think that the yellow font comes out a little it's bit. It's green. So, 
from this area to this area, you got access to average hose. Average hose average right here. Average hose from the average line all the way down to the poverty line. You just got access to average hose. Now, there's something Get past your mic. average hose. There is something past there is a reality past average holes, which is Instagram Insta holes right here. But wait, but I want, I want to go back a second to what's not on the board back here. Worse than average holes. You've got your strippers, your crack whores, your prostitutes, undesirable women, undesirable women that you women. don't want to marry because they're going to fuck you over. Correct. So we're talking about Stormy Daniels. And here's a very yes. important fact about my boy, Donald Trump. And I got, I want you guys Tell to him. listen to this. I want you guys Tell to him. listen to this. Tell them. When you are up here in the ranks of power, when you are up here, a billionaire, when you got access to these type of hoes, we're not going to call, we're calling them hoes because we don't know their name individually. We're just saying they're hoes. We're not saying they're hoes. When you got power like Donald Trump, you have no reason whatsoever to go above this line. See, because Donald Trump decided to go up here into the danger zone. When you are watching Lion King, and Mufasa, it's with... He uh, says everything uh, he says, the light touches is our kingdom. The, exactly. It's everything within everything. this chart. Right here. The stripper holes, the only... the only, right. All of that, this this is where it's at. This right. is uh, over here. So, so the problem is that when Donald Trump goes down to the forbidden area where you're not supposed to be touching these hoes, the Stormy Daniels of the war, the Amber Roses of the world, which, again, you know, yay... I think he got her before she became a big whore, actually. Yeah, he, he kind of discovered her. So we won't count on her. Um, but when you go down to this side of the world like Donald Trump did, that's when you get in trouble. Oh. Do you understand what happened to Andrew Tate as well? Because he's dealing with this low life women. So then the men say, oh, my God, these women are persecuting me. And they are. We sympathize with these men. But did they put themselves in this situation is the question. The answer is yes, they did. They went into the danger zone and they went above into the, into basically la, la tierra de nunca jamás. I can't say that. I don't know what that translates into, but it's a, it's just a bad place that you don't want to get into. And that is basically the dynamic that, that we have here. What we have just so that to clarify again for what, what you guys cannot see is the average holes, the average yeah, holes. And it's then it. basically everybody yeah. from the drug dealers up until the sports guys, the rappers and the reggaetoneros have access access to the Instagram models, right? We got access to all of those like hot holes and other, you know, Instagram models and other hot holes. And then you get to like the Ronaldo, Hollywood, Trump, yay level, at which point you're dating supermodels. We right. need you to understand that when we say, when you go on and you say something like Melania's mid or, or, or Nina Robbie. or Margot Robbie is mid and you exist here, this is why it's frustrating for us because you, as an average guy, a crypto bro, maybe even a drug dealer, maybe even a streamer, you will never, never. have access never. to these women. Never. You will never, never have access to these women. So you don't have to worry about these women. You don't have to worry about Nina Agdal being a whore because you don't have access to her. That's the beautiful thing about it. You're going to have to worry about this. This is it. And this is this is great. You know, when you think about it, because some, some people are like, oh, is it about just being ugly or, or bad? No, it's not. Because when you think about it, which is a very rare example, by the way, don't think this is like everybody. Ronaldo, right, mm -hmm. who's now with Georgina, beautiful girl. She was an average person. She was literally a Gucci store attendant. So it doesn't mean that because you are in the limited axis, uh, a limited whole axis, you're going to have to just have bad women. No, on the contrary, They're that's very good. Women. It's really Actually, good women. We're talking about hoes. the higher end hoes. And I hope and, that makes sense. And and another thing that's worth mentioning, because it's not on here, is notice how it's just holes, no virgins. Right. No right, virgins. Right, right, right. I'm going to explain to you why. Because, because the power, virgin power, the idea that because you have a Bugatti, you deserve a virgin does not exist. No, because virgins virgin are not worried about is that. not based off power dynamics. A virgin, you're going to get a virgin and you're going to be deserving of a virgin woman because your values and your worth as a man, it's where it's at. Not because Go you back. have power. And this is, the, this is the problem with the RP movement, that the RP movement... The RP movement will take 
I think it's got a little bit of the, okay. So here's the problem with the RP movement that they'll tell you that power you and increase in power means that these men now deserve virgins. No, virgins are not impressed by power. And Unless you're like a sheik in and like Abu Dhabi and you're not. Right. So again, like this is a problem. And here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, the other day, and, I, and I'm not going to make, I'm not, this is not a mean comment. I know sometimes I'm sarcastic and I say things that are uh, rude, but this is actually, I'm not trying to be mean. So on, on, on TikTok, you guys know that I love TikTok, mostly for entertainment purposes. Yes, I come across... So. A beautiful video of these girl of these Christian girls. I don't know their denomination, but they're talking about modesty. They're very modesty dressed. They have no makeup on. Great, beautiful girls. I'm sure most of them are virgins doing their worshiping for Jesus Christ. And I think to myself, and I send it to her. And I mean, it was a lot of them, right? A lot of them. A lot of them. And I'm like, how could you guys say? How could you guys say that there are no pure, beautiful women out here in America that you have to go overseas? You know what the problem is? That you again. Want to make this Instagram thotties into the virgins. You don't actually want to date a virgin because they have no sex appeal. They're not wearing makeup. They're not showing their titties. They're not showing their assholes. I'm not their assholes. I'm sorry. <laughs> their asses also sometimes. Also, <laughs> also sometimes. And you don't want somebody that's showing their asshole. Actually, that would be horrible. You don't want your mother to, to you know, that would be like, you know. In the family, but that's the problem. The problem is that they're mad that these girls over here, right? These hot hoes over here that can date any of these guys, right? They could date a CEO, they could get a doctor, an entrepreneur, streamer, NFL, whatever, reggaetoneros. They're mad that those girls are now just pure, beautiful virgin girls just staying home, and I guess choosing them as their as their husbands and boyfriends. And and that is really why we have to uh, why we did this. We it started it was, as an idea. It was just it, funny, it started, but honestly, we just needed to create a visualization of the conversation we've been already having. But this chart, and here we go. Here's another. This is what's genius about this chart that things just kept on jumping out right. at us. This is why men love hoes, right? This is why men love right. hoes. And I'll take it one step further. This is why we say that women are the prize. Right. This is why we say that women are the prize. In fact, I want to go back to a question. Quinn in the chat asked, will you guys do an inverse women of power versus guys that they can get? Here's the beauty of it, Quinn. As women, we don't need power. We could just be cute as shit, pretty as shit, and literally jump from average hole to supermodel status with the Trumps and the Leos and the Yays of the world because women are the prize. Very many, many, many such cases. women are the prize. Many so I, as long as a man at that level wants you, it doesn't matter how average you are. It doesn't matter what you feel you lack. If a man at that level wants you, you already jumped up in 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 value, I guess, if you will, if what they place their value in. Well, look at is, Georgina, right? Like, right. again, if you and this is not going to happen to mostly i mean we don't know that but this is like a one percent so don't think that the exception is the rule but when you look at the relationship between um uh georgina and ronaldo is that ronaldo had dated all the supermodels irina shaik they saw him with kim kardashian paris hilton uh so many women so many beautiful women of status all the way up here in the supermodel because again right the chart is very clear if you are a hot hoe at the at the at the Kim Kardashian Giselle uh in in a shaik status, then you can date all the way up here, which is what happened to those women. But what did Ronaldo do? Ronaldo went and saw a beautiful average woman that had nothing to her name, that was actually pretty poor when she, mm -hmm. I guess, moved to Spain. But he saw that she was beautiful and youthful and nice and probably kind and easy to get along with. And who knows? She probably wasn't really looking to gold dig and to just take his well, money he just found her he found her i know he found her but i'm saying why he stayed with her yeah right because they, she wasn't a right right so and so now that is the mother of his children and and so she she's now over here she's and gonna, i'll, a, a I'll also say this people. it's not that it, it and this goes back to the conversation right because i want to i want to take back something the rp says that women's value is only on their youth and their purity I saw a clip of Sauce Cast where he was basically saying, like, how many millionaires do you know that, you know, are marrying women their age? Like they're all like this. There's this misconception that 
all rich men, all rich men of power are marrying models, hoes, Instagram well, models or whatever also, it is. What they say is too average below. They're like, oh, the McDonald's worker. They always love. Oh, to they say, love to say the McDonald's, the McDonald's worker. worker. Here's the here's the problem with with that ideology, right? Women do gain value in the things that the RP says they don't. When you have I just came from an event right now. The event was a very, uh, very corporate type of like Christian event with Christian organizations here in South Florida coming together to recognize leaders in our community. Um, they we, some very powerful people there. But I just saw the um, the owner of Cheng Medical. Okay. The super tall Asian guy. I just wanted to point out to you, like really handsome guy. Yeah. I was really taken back. Um, but all that to say the following, all of these organizations are their prominent, powerful people. Do you think you want to take an Instagram thoughty to that event? No. The men there were with their wives, educated wives, that they themselves have degrees or are uh, or, or are stay-at-home mothers that take care of their children. Uh, these are men with women that are that are educated, that have their that they have backgrounds and careers and all these other things. This idea that the RP feeds you that the only way that women have value is their youth and their purity, which are clearly things that will disappear with age, is completely untrue. I'm saying it's untrue because I can even speak from personal experience. When my husband and I got married, part of his vows, his marriage vows to me were his appreciation for how determined I always was to succeed. My, uh, my, my being career driven, uh, wanting to succeed for our family provide was something that he appreciated in our marriage. So when I hear the RP say that men only value youth and purity, you're not going to tell me that the couple that's been married for 60 years is married for 60 years because the wife somehow stayed young and pure through 60 years of marriage. It doesn't work that way. So, no, women a, do have value in a yeah. lot of other ways. Your education, how you treat your home, how you take care of your home, how you uh, how you, how are you in your your maternal side, not just with your children, but with animals, with the man that you're with. Can you provide a safe place for him? Can you provide a place for him to be able to grow? Uh, th those things as a woman are very important and do, in fact, add significant value to you and will help you attract a man of value uh, of higher yeah. value. Really? Now, higher value, not as defined by the RP space which is Bugatti, bitches, the whole nine. I mean high value as a man that's actually going to put his family home first, put his home first, a man that's hardworking, a man that's honest, a man that's got conviction. Those things are a man of high value. Yeah. And I, I, I think also what some people don't realize is that if you are in the category of, of the CEOs, the entrepreneurs, if you're like a Jeff Bezos, mm -hmm. if you're like a Mark Zuckerberg, like you, even though you can't date, in the hot model category and really be introduced to whatever girl typically they date within their group of people like mark zuckerberg was going to need a woman that's just as nerdy and mm -hmm. as intelligent and as high as iq as he is maybe he could have slept around a couple of these girls who are just hot and make him look good but for such a high intellectual man i don't think that those type of men would be able to just be with like the hot hoes just because they're hot and they're hoes no they're not it's not so again like i said i can't not, imagine going yeah. to the event that i was at today with all of these prominent members yeah of our community and to have seen an, an Instagram hole there. Like I, right. I, I can't imagine for the life of me and be like, oh, this prominent man getting an award and be like, come here, honey. And it's like yeah. they're thotty on the side. Like it's, it's like, just, bro, it's not based off reality. And you know why it is? Because it's motherfuckers at this level. Yeah. It's motherfuckers at this Look. level that just finally got access to Instagram models and hot holes. And now they're like, oh, those are my Instagram models and my hot holes. And I'm so excited about that. Yeah. Uh, work anymore. <laughs> it's so here. So it's really ghetto here, guys. It's really ghetto here. Oh, wow. But I mean, the show's good. The show's good. Production might be a little ghetto, but for the now. show is for good. Now. We now. might not have sound for the first fifteen minutes of but the show, we at least... but the show is good, bro. So, so that's that's that for the power and flow uh, chart. Uh, somebody did say, "A oh, man, where is it?" Somebody said, I thought this was interesting. A high value man will get a really pretty cashier at Costco. He does not care like women do. But again, you That's have to. That's not true. Well, hold on. You, <laughs> first of all, it's 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 true if it's an average an guy, average that's high a value guy, man. Yes, right? I agree. Because think about it. Who goes to Costco? Average people. Like you're not gonna walk in one day, and what are the chances that you're gonna see like again Tyler Harrow 
Jeff or Jeff, or his Jeff Bezos, Bezos isn't falling in love it, it, so. with the girl at the <laughs> just so that you know for example when Jeff Bezos got engaged everybody had so much to say about his fiance they're like oh she's just a gold digging whore she's just a gold digging whore she's a Pulitzer winner journalist she's right. got her degrees she's right. got recognition from the community yeah she's got she's got fake lips and fake boobs and the entire thing and you can say whatever you want about her but she's still a woman that's educated that can hold a conversation yeah. so this idea that there's just these hot retail workers and hot cashiers everywhere that rich men are just picking up like you know we talk about staying in the bell curve like that's not that's not that's most not cases it's not real and even if she's a beautiful pure virgin that man might not have anything in common with her i can understand why to a streamer that does not matter the streamer hasn't really gone up much past a drug dealer i mean honestly who's under them drug dealers and crypto bros literally it's it's who's under them so when a streamer says, oh, well, I'm rich and this is the kind of woman that I want access with. That's not that's not true wealth. That is not that's true not, power. No. That is if, if you're truly looking at men of high value, a man like Donald Trump, a, a billionaire, a politician, married, a, that's high value. And that kind of man isn't walking to a Costco to marry. Yes, I agree with you. Like we mentioned with the chart. The beauty of women and why women are the prize is that you're absolutely right. A woman can start off here and end up at the end of that chart with a man that's at the end of that chart without having to do anything. And I understand that the RP space is truly resentful for women for that. Like, we should apologize for that. Like, we should feel bad about the fact that we could go on a yacht that doesn't belong to us, that we could go out without money at night. The RP wants women to feel shame for that. I'm not going to feel shame for that. That is the real world example of why women are the prize. Because women can do that and men cannot. And you'll never be able to do that no matter how much they try and shift the power dynamics of dating relationships so that's that and uh no seriously it's just we, we i were... mean it's a well i want to um read a super chat hater says hey guys what do y'all think about andy Fursella interviewing vivek ramaswamy also y'all seriously need to need more subs y'all deserve do. it have a great night we do we do we do but i mean i'll be honest with you our production isn't the best and we don't record enough and we're not but i promise you you guys these super chats are really helping us so we appreciate it so much we are working on this we're going to be able to put out more content for you guys more consistently improve the quality of the production and hopefully that equates to more to more subs because i agree our content is fucking amazing not just because it's ours but i mean where else are you getting this bro where else are you getting this real reality, particularly in a space that's completely inundated with people that are brain dead? And, and, and I say that because I'm sorry, but I can't take anything that Pearl says seriously. And the reason why I can't take anything that Pearl says seriously is because she's everything that she says is wrong with women. She's over the age of 25. She's unmarried. She's not a virgin. She does uh, her. She's got a full time job that she's 100 percent focused on in her career. So it's impossible for me to think that the things that she says are realistic in any capacity or uh, representative of the real dating market when she can't even live to that standard that she set for herself. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well. You know, speaking of hoes and awful people and everything, let's talk about Matt Walsh. If you guys know, Matt Walsh is a Christian conservative commentator that works at the Daily Wire. Huge uh, hater. And Matt Walsh has been in the forefront of the culture wars, particularly with the transgender LGBT issue. Um, but also one thing that Matt Walsh hates besides everything that he hates is actually single childless women and um we can actually bring in politics a little bit because and back i don't have kids yet 20, here's what your saturday your morning planet? looks like yeah, no, hold on. you're I single go back at 29 to you, i didn't mean to do that hold on i didn't mean to do that i didn't mean to do that i was okay. just uploading it um when back in 2022 um, back in 2022, when we had the midterm elections, the exit polls actually Julian showed that single, single. Uh, unmarried that. women voted for Democrats by 68 percent versus 31 percent or something for Republicans. Every other group, married men, married women and unmarried men actually vote a Republican. So single childless women that I are actually a problem for everybody, for all of us, Correct. because they're voting Democrats. So this is something that we all agree. Now, what is the messaging from the Republican Party? What is the messaging from uh, these conservative influencers? 
really nothing else that you're you're a whore you're gonna die alone and the cats are gonna eat you <laughs> pretty much <laughs> what we hear for single millennial women now there's a lot of things that take into account as to why uh especially i think is the millennial generation it's the least right is that what they say that they're the that uh they're the they're gonna end up most single women no, by 40 by or 2030, something. By 2030, most of that by 2030, more than half of women over the age of 40 will remain single and childless for the right. rest of their life. So there's a lot of things that are, that have really impacted the millennial generation, including obviously like the boss babe culture. This is already, uh, you know, we're talking about two income family houses. You go to school, you got to work. Once you work, um, you are stressed out trying yeah. to figure out your life trying to pay bills you're probably in debt you know the problem with a lot of these conservatives is that they think that everyone is going to get married the girl's gonna stay at home the wife is gonna stay at home which is the ideal situation as you guys know that she's not gonna work she's gonna take care of the children and then the husband is gonna provide now that is an ideal situation is that actually reality for all of american it's not it's not even a reality for all of Republicans. It's not a reality for all of conservatives because the reality is, is that it's very expensive to live in this country. Um, if you want to move to the middle of nowhere, like we saw two, two in the middle of Maryland, we saw an ad and it was like $1,400. You can't even get anything for $1,400 in Miami, maybe a room if you're lucky. So maybe if you want to make the sacrifice and live in the middle of nowhere in America, then perhaps you could uh, be able to afford in a, you know, with a, with a lower income for your wife to stay home. So yesterday, what we saw, or this week, what we saw was that a girl uh, on TikTok, I think her name is Liz, um, posted a video minding, she, her business. minding her own business. She works for Spotify. She has her own podcast and she also has kind of like a blog diary with the podcast where she's talking about relationships in general. I went through almost every single one of the podcast titles trying to see and I actually listen to one of them. And also recently she is single. So she's 29 years old and she recently broke up with a relationship, uh, broke up with her boyfriend. And this is a video that she posted on TikTok. We're going to watch it right now. This is what this triggered is Matt Walsh. This is what triggered Matt Walsh. This Mind you, this woman's just minding Walsh. her business. 45 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm 29 and single and I don't have kids yet. Here's what your Saturday morning looks like when you're there. single at 29 and you don't have a kid running around the house. Can you guys I hear the audio on that? from my bed until 10, 15. Every time I thought I should probably get up and do something. I thought, why? Nobody's making me. I'm not missing out on anything. I went to Beyonce last night okay. and I didn't get home until 1 a.m. And I danced and drank my little heart out and I didn't pay a babysitter to watch my kids as I did that. And I woke up a tad hungover this morning, which is probably why I was in bed for so long. And I was just scrolling on my phone and I saw a picture of shakshuka and I thought, you know what sounds you really good? Away the little Maybe I'm so gonna learn how to make to shakshuka me. today. Because I have no plans and I don't have kids and I don't have a husband and I don't have errands to run. I can go to the grocery store store and learn how to make shakshuka so that's on my agenda today also on my agenda probably a rewatch of some real housewives of new york i'm also doing a rewatch of normal people on hulu which is really spicy and i highly recommend weirdly i'm into this shakshuka. documentary on I think Netflix I want to learn about how to blue zone shakshuka. countries so i've got a pretty oh, stacked day pretty wack, anyway i like say tomato all this and to eggs say like whenever i'm hurt on myself else. about why like, i'm not married and i don't I will have to yeah, yeah pretty much i think 29 almost 30 i think it's like a i wouldn't want to i think it's like a jewish like a israeli dish you can do all these things when you have kids and you're married and i understand but the effortlessness and ease of my life just kind of focusing on myself and the shakshuka i want to make or the beyonce concert i want to go to really pays off when i'm hard on myself it's for long, not being right? where society tells me i should be in life no, it's almost done. so this woman and, and here's something that you guys should know um, when you go back and you actually look at the content, this woman um, had been in a long-term relationship. She had gotten out of this long-term relationship, um, going through a breakup. wasn't wasn't her fault apparently. Um, like she's she's telling you in general that she is coping. That like, she's coping. She's they, like I'm I'm yeah, I, I'm she's lonely. Taking I am. Her, she she's, and she's taking her right. followers through a journey where she's she documented. just said it on this actual video that she should be further along that she's hard on herself because she realizes that at 29 society expects you to be married and have at least one or two children right some people may even have three before the age of 30 so she's clearly coping with the situation it's not like the person or matt walsh said that she's showing off being 
single and childless, yeah, they, and this is the way that she likes it to they, be. That's not at all her, what happened. They took her finding a silver lining in her situation that she agrees is not ideal. Right. But she's still trying to find a silver lining because we're all just trying to get by in this world and exist. There's a lot of men that don't see that are involuntarily um, not having any sex whatsoever. And that's not a fault of them. That lifestyle isn't a fault of them. So when it, it, we got to learn how to be a little bit kinder to people when they're not on the same timeline as we are. This woman is openly admitting that she's going through a difficult time, that things are hard. Mm -hmm. She's trying to find joy in the simple moments, cooking her little meal, watching her little show, going to her little concert. I understand. She understands that it's not ideal. But how cruel is it? How cruel has the right become where you take a woman like that, you blast her to your millions of followers, million followers, to your millions of followers so that they can go onto her comment section and make her feel even worse about the situation that she's in. Shame her about the situation that she's in when she's not doing anything wrong. She's not, her relationship didn't work out. Now she needs to find someone else. What should she be doing? Should she be out there having sex with random men? Should she be out there? Um, you know what's funny? Her content is very wholesome. It's, a, it's actually it's very, very wholesome. wholesome yeah. I just, I, I don't understand why the, the right has become this space where it's all Cruelty. about shaming others yeah. in the cruelest way for self-validation. Like, oh, I did the right thing because I got married and I got. I'm going to give you guys an example. During the 2020 race riots, there was something really I ironic that happened. I don't think living in Miami, I'm not very aware that I'm Latina because everybody around me is Latina. We're all brown here. <laughs> so olive. in 20 in olive, correct. Olive, to olive. me, I haven't even got an Italian in a while. <laughs> but um, to me, it was always funny because you could always say things like, oh, well, uh, White lives matter too, and that's okay. I'm a brown person. I can say that. And I could always say, I'm a brown person. I can say that. And that always felt to me like, bro, what a get out of jail free card. You can say whatever you want just because you say like, oh, I'm, I'm brown or I'm black or whatever. And it seems like such a shitty way to handle society and conversations. And I feel like I'm watching that again in 2023 with the, with the RP space where how many times don't I have to tell people like, oh, that's why you're going to be single or whatever. And I'm like, I'm not single. I'm married. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm happily married to a really yeah. awesome fucking guy. Mm -hmm. And then I don't think it should be that way. Like, I don't think that we need to exist in a place where somebody says something like that. And I have some kind of upper hand that Linda doesn't have because I'm married and she's not. How, how is that? Again, how does that make any sense? Particularly when it's like, there's, there's no difference in value. Well, it's no, it, 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 you know, I think they wear it as a badge of honor, but it's only online where this happens because I'm regularly around other couples and I talk to married people almost every single day, you know, you and others and stuff like that. And no one really feels that way. Like no one really shows off their marriage that much or their status except for conservatives online. So I think that's a very interesting situation with these people. Now, the other thing that I want to point out for the person that said that, you know, we're being too charitable, too char charitable with our opinion on this young woman. Um, you know, she's. I heard an entire podcast when she says she. It was this was actually August fifteenth, so this was twenty days ago, where she tells her followers how done. So she tried so hard to stay in this last relationship, so much so that she got her mom suggested that they would go to couples therapy. So why is she trying so hard with someone that's not even her husband? Think about that for a second. Why should you start couples therapies with a person that you're dating if it's not because you're trying so hard so that you're able to say, I got married and engaged at least before I'm 30 years old mm -hmm. because if not, I'm going to end up single, alone, childless with cats and they're going to eat me. So she, go <laughs> this was 20 days ago where she's telling her followers, you know, I broke up with X. And before that, I actually tried couples therapy for a while because I re we really thought that we would be able to work things out. It didn't work out. I'm moving on. I have to accept that I am single, childless at 29, but I'm trying to find the little joys in my life. So you guys are right for whoever said that she is heartbroken and sad because she is, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, I don't I don't think that Matt Walsh 
is wrong in commenting. It is a public profile. You can comment on whoever you want. But the problem becomes when he's like, you're she, you're so stupid. You don't. He goes, she's so stupid. She doesn't even know like how miserable she is. Like, no, she does know. She 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 knows. That's why she's coping. That's why she's making this type of content. But that's not the only but person. Also- Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, that's not that they're they have a they have a problem. I think, especially since the twenty twenty elections, with the the twenty two elections with the single unmarried women, and the problem is that you're not the the abortion situation is already hindering Republicans from trying to win this demographic and yep. conservatives. Right. Yep. We're not going to give up on the abortion stuff, pro life, whatever it may be. So I mean, it's what just a conversation other, conservatives don't want to have. Right. What other solutions do we have as far as messaging to try to reach out to this demographic that does have voting power? It's a very that is important well educated. demographic. Um, for example, and something else that they don't want to talk about is like Republicans want to see people with children. So do we. We agree with that. Just yesterday, an article came out by Vanity Fair. Remember mm-hmm. we were reading it? Um, talking it. about it up. How uh, the women, millennials want to have children, but they think that children are so expensive. Now, if you know anything about Latin families, if you know anything about poor people in general, whatever demographic, white, Indian, Asian, blacks, uh, Latinos, poor people have kids no matter what. Right. And there's like a saying in Spanish, donde comen uno, comen todos. Like where one person eats, everybody eats. Right. There's this perception that having children is so expensive. It obviously is if you need daycare, if you need a lot more things that somehow parents nowadays have like a list of insane things that they need. But the reality is, is that we don't have a cohesive message for these single millennial women, except shaming, vilifying, and telling them they're going to die alone. And I mm-hmm. just don't think that that's actually working at all. Did you put it up? I'm going to put it up right now. Hold on. Give me one moment. Yes, that's Let a big talking up point right here. Share screen. Okay. Well, I dislike my wash for different reasons, too. This is just a share, uh, cherry, on, uh, cherry on top. You know, it's not... um. All right. Priced out of pregnancy, a common theme amongst the women I speak to is a sense that it takes a whole village to raise a child and that village is no longer there as young adults relocate from their whole towns to work. You can have it all. Don't be too picky about choosing a partner. The clock is ticking. If you're anything like me, a 34 year old woman without children, the chances are you've heard the advice or something similar to it when it comes to the question of when are you having kids? In my experience, many often well-meaning people tend to assume women my age have forgotten to have children or we don't realize the limits of our biological clock that or we aren't pragmatic about having children. Women in poor countries get on with it. So what's the problem? Deep down, however, I can help thinking that young women have been thrown under the bus economically and declining birth rates in Britain and in the West are an example of a warning sign. When speaking to friends, whether single or married, I've never heard anyone sell, well, my career comes first about having a baby or I've got until my mid 40s to sort it out. The conversation is more like, how the hell will we manage it? I'm not going to read the entire article, but um, this is a conversation that is happening. It is mainstream. It is an issue that people are not paying attention to. There are a lot of people in a younger uh, in a younger generation, whether it's be Gen Z or millennials, that are getting out of college with the craziest student loans that have ever existed in the history of our country before, with property value at the highest that it's ever been, ever. groceries at the highest that it's ever been. And yes, I am unapologetically pro-life, but we also have to be pragmatic about the solutions that we are offering because people do feel like they don't have solutions and women could feel that way. In fact, whole couples could feel that way. When I see that there's advice being given of men, don't of get don't married, men, don't get married. Don't, um, you know, don't, don't, don't go live with your homies. Don't go live with your girl. That's the fastest way out of poverty in our country is through a dual income household. It is very much to get married. So yes, a lot of women do feel like they don't have a choice. And to open up the other conversation, how often are women who follow their careers shamed? And I think that the RP has a big misconception where somehow every woman that has a career is Miranda Priestly on fucking, on on the Devil Wears Prada. 
that everybody sac- it's everybody's gonna get to be 80 years old, sacrifice their life with no kids, no marriage, no nothing. I had a very successful oh, okay. career. I, I I have a very successful career. And I'm married and my marriage and my home and everything else comes first. But I also have a very successful career. Why? Because I am the daughter of immigrants. Not working was not an option option. that I ever had available to me. I was working since I had a a before you even get a green card, you get Mm -hmm. a work permit. And the minute that I got my work permit, my parents having we well off, I was working at 15 years old and I don't under like it's this type of I've mentality been working since I was 14 years old too. I just right. didn't have a, I didn't have a choice. Like my parents were really poor. We grew up in poverty. My parents were immigrants. My parents, you know, this th- is not a, a thing that's going to be accepted for immigrants. Cause, cause here's right. the thing too, Bella, that I told you in our home country, sending your kids to school abroad or having your kids go to school period and getting an education shows upward mobility and a socioeconomic status. So you, you, for, for example, for, for Latino family or have family that move here from Mexico. Imagine if you move here and your daughter, I mean, if your daughter gets married and she's a stay at home wife, no one's going to be mad at that. But imagine if like that doesn't happen right after she's 18. And then what is she going to do? Just stay home uh, cooking uh, uh, tacos and tortillas until Prince Charming comes along. No, she's going to have to go off to college or do some sort of vocational oh school my God, or, the... or, or, I mean, if she yeah. has children already, then that's okay. But you can't just, what's think... the greatest pride for a Latino parent, if not a graduation, a graduation. Oh, oh my, my god goodness. to see their kids in a cap and gown to know that that they went through all of the struggles left everything behind that they left behind so that their kids could come to this country and pursue success freedom everything the recognition of that cap and gown yeah. means so much to an immigrant family that it's how i know that the rp is tone deaf because what's well, the same thing with getting like a really good yeah. job of, of course, or climbing the corporate you know? ladder. Again, everybody that climbs the corporate ladder isn't going to be the CEO of a multi-billion dollar conglomerate that requires that they change. You can have a good career in human resources and spend 10 years and maybe you're the manager of a human resources department. That's average and it's good and it's a career and it's and it's and, and, and it means that you accomplish something and it doesn't mean that you can have a family and it doesn't mean that you can't get married. So I I strongly disagree because of my seeing my own upbringing and not just that living in Miami, seeing the upbringing, the upbringing of all the other women around me, these Latina women whose family went through hell to come into the greatest country that ever existed so that they could pursue an education. So when I hear really controversial things like Nick Fuentes saying that women shouldn't pursue higher learning, that they shouldn't go to college, I understand that our college campuses are infected with liberalism and communism and woke thought thinking. But the the, the education is still important because of the doors that it opens for you. Less than 1% of the population can be a streamer. That's not a realistic alternative for everybody. And the, the truth of the matter is, as a recruiter, somebody that's in employment and has been for a very long time, you are the more education that you have, the more doors are going to be open to you professionally. The more doors that you have open professionally, the more likely you are to walk through a door that guarantees you a living salary that's yeah. going to allow you to live a good life. So when you have a two income household that provides that, where both men and women are in comfortable situations, that's how you get, unfortunately. I would love to live in a world where it's realistic for all women to stay home and bear children to their husbands and 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 be prim and proper. But the reality is that it's just not realistic. For that is not an option. My family is immigrants. Both of my parents had to work. My dad had to work at night. My mom had to go to work in the day. And when I got home from school, I was a latchkey kid. I was alone for the first two hours. I grew up on the don't open up the door for strangers mm-hmm. because I had to go make my hot pocket to watch my cartoons when I got home and wait to hours for my mom to get home not because my dad was an old-fashioned not because my mom wouldn't have preferred to stay home with me it just wasn't an option you don't have a choice it wasn't an option you don't and um there was somebody i think it was reina and i just want to give you some advice because you are one of my favorites she says i get really scared because i kind of feel like i'm gonna be alone forever friends from college already got married and having children. I just uh, was telling Bella yesterday that there is a TikTok. I wish I would have uploaded it, but maybe I could show it to you tomorrow. 
of this woman. She's 47 years old and her husband, I think it's around her same age or a little bit older. And she says that, you know, they found each other really late in life. She just had her child at 47 years old. Um, remember th that we're not encouraging women to wait till they're 47. It just happens that she didn't have a partner or I don't know the situation before, but this is her first child naturally conceived at 47 years old. And, you know, she says that, you know, it is possible to find love and it is possible to find happiness later in life. Uh, so I don't know your situation. I don't know where you live, but you also have to think of, uh, you know, self-improvement, how you look, where you hang out. If you're actually putting yourself out there at coffee shops, at church, um, hobbies and stuff like hanging that, at the right places you know, hanging out important. at the right places, obviously making sure that you have proper hygiene, that your hair is done, your nails are done, that you look feminine and nice and, and, and kind and you're pleasant to be around. There's a lot of things. Obviously we can talk about this later, but the reality is, is that maybe it's not your time. Maybe this is, it's all about God's timing. And this is something that I think was very interesting to hear from the Christians. You know, Anthony called me today and said, I see you're waging, raging war on the conservative Christians. And I say, I rage war on everybody. <laughs> but also the reason why I think this is interesting is because typically religious people or Christian people will tell you that it's God's ti timing. That's what, the, that's what, that's what they should say. Because if we go back to the, to the Bible, uh, the matriarch of, of, you know, if you want to say Judeo-Christian values or Christianity is, you know, Sarah, Sarah, couldn't conceive children until she was 90 years old. And we don't know what 90 means in, in Bible in times, time. in biblical times, if biblical, if that's 30 for them. But the Bible says that she was 90 years old when um, she had her first child. And I'm wondering to myself, how would these men have treated Sarah, if she was, you know, in, in this no, time? No, Sarah should have jumped she, off a building, she, post wall. Kill yourself, I there, guess, because... You know, I mean, like, what are, what are you supposed to do? Here's the other part of the situation. You have a 50% divorce rate. And I truly do believe that because we are so scared to end up alone, we do end up in certain situations yep. that could have been prevented. Many, many times people are alone. They make both male and women. I have friends that were married by 22 and divorced by 25. I have a father right now. She's a mother of four. She beautiful girl, gorgeous, gorgeous girl, married the older rich guy. This is what they tell you to do, right? If you're something like 27 years old, 25 years old, make sure you go for the guy that's 45, 50 years old, already accomplished, already rich. You can stay at home. She did that. She she did that. She was 25 years old and found and bagged the millionaire at 50. That was 50 years old, literally twice her age. And now she's a single mother of four at 30 years old. Now think about how much harder it is going to be for this mother, despite the fact that she's beautiful, to date at 30 years old with not one, but four children. So things don't always uh, turn out to be the way that they are. And I think that this is something else that they're not ready. Conservatives don't want to talk about even parenthood. Not everybody should be a parent. And this is a very uncomfortable conversation. News just came out this week when we were over in Virginia. So last week, um, a Utah mother of eight, six, they went, the YouTube channel was called Passenger 8, a passenger, something passenger like that. Eight, yeah. And a, a very famous YouTuber. I think she had like 2.5 million followers. And basically it was documenting her life as a parent uh, of six children, very religious family. Turns out that she was abusing her child this entire time, not sexually abusing them, but physically and mentally abusing them. Like a, like she's in jail right now. And her daughter, her oldest daughter, this was actually, old, I just saw her, she did an interview yesterday mm -hmm. for the first time because everybody was always uh, uh, wondering, where is her older daughter? She kind of like disappeared out of the picture. We never saw her again. Turns out that her older daughter once she was able to get away from her psychotic, abusive mom, she did. So now we have six traumatized children uh, on this planet that I'm sure will find their purpose if they hold on to God and they'll be fine. But at the end of the day, not every single person should be a parent. Every single person and, is not And, yeah. you, you know, I wonder how many of these people that are so cruel and mean to single uh, people, 
you know, these conservatives are actually happy in their marriage? How many of them are uh, porn addicts? How many of them verbally abuse their wives? I mean, you know, look at look at what came up about, no, you I know, think, Crowder. I, just, I wonder how much is it is like where people don't prioritize that are the main thing that we're, you know, brought on here is to procreate, you know? And I do think also that there's been like a value that's been taken mm -hmm. away from procreating in, in a sense, like not in the sense where the RP does, but for the sake of leaving a legacy. Like, I feel like there's not a lot of people that look at children in the sake of leaving a legacy, because if you are concerned about leaving a legacy, you're going to raise your, your children in such a way that you want to be representative, represented by that legacy. And I don't think that enough people go into the having children and raising children as part of a legacy that you live, that you leave in this world um, of yourself. So I wonder how much of that, you know, and I, I also to to Raina's comment about feeling alone and it's like, yeah, I agree. Like there there's um there, there's a lot of like fear porn that's like fair to women and there's no timeline. There really is no timeline. It's God's just, timeline, dude. You it's, never know. You you really just never know when it is that it's meant to happen. Yeah. Um, The only advice that I can give to single women is to also, you know, be clear on what it is that you want and what are your priorities. I've told Linda before that. Um, when I was single and something that I still share with my single friends, it's an exercise where I have you write down a list of every single quality that you could possibly imagine that you could want in a mate, uh, whether it's a uh, height, money, how they show up, if they're honest, the way that their hair looks, what every single last detail down to how big their toes are. If you care about that stuff, write it all down and then you want to assess your list. And you want to narrow down that list to the top five things. And this is where really picky women are going to have a really hard time because they can't decide what's the most important. What are the priorities? Now, calm down. You could have a lot of things on that list, but here's why those five things are important. When you go out into the dating market to ensure that you're not falling into situations where you're just settling because you're scared of ending up alone. When you go out into the dating market, and this works for men or women, it is your job to identify a partner that has those five things. All of the other things on that list are negotiable. That's where, um, where love comes in, where sacrifice comes in, where uh, 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 the, the meeting in the middle comes in. But those five things are your responsibility. So for example, if one of your five things is, um, I want to date a hardworking man and you find a guy that's a crypto bro, and that's all he does. Um, whose fault is that when he's not a hardworking man? I have a friend of mine. She was dating a, a drug dealer. She was dating a drug dealer. And <laughs> for, reference. <laughs> for reference, she was dating a drug dealer. What's the thing with this drug? This drug dealer was in love with her, and my friend is beautiful. She's got a master's degree. She's got a good job. She's a homeowner. She's got all her shit together. And she meets this drug dealer. And the, this drug dealer had just gone out of jail. And uh, he was at best a three. At best. Now, I'm not talking about physical or anything, but it's just what did he have to offer? Not much. So at best a three. But this guy loved her so much. So, so, so much. And he went and he got a job and he was like, a, a, like a, he got like a head server at some like high end restaurant. And like he, he was going to school and he wanted to get his GD and he was doing all of these things. And he legitimately made went from a three to at least I'd say at least a five and a half to a six. He was working on himself and he was a five and a half and a six. And he had doubled his worth while he was with her because he loved her and he wanted to work on himself and all these things. But what was the problem? That she was a nine, a 10, however you want to look at her. And she was dissatisfied with the fact that even at his best, he was a six. But whose fault was that? Was it his fault who went and doubled his worth and went out there and worked just to prove or was it her fault because she should have never dated a three to begin with because she was going to be dissatisfied with the fact that even if he got better and was a six, she wasn't going to be she wasn't going to be satisfied with that. So I feel that a big mistake that um, women and men both make in dating is that they are not clear on what their personal priorities are on what it is that they're looking for in a partner. So if you're just wandering around aimlessly waiting for this magic person to come in that matches everything on your list, it's probably never going to happen. But. 
if you're clear on the things that are truly a priority to you, number one, you're going to waste a lot less time. You don't have to go on nameless dating. You don't have to get your heart broken by people that were never meant for you. You don't settle until you find those five things. Once you find those five things and you find a partner, then everything else is negotiable. Everything else is about patience. Everything else is about love and flexibility and falling and, and where it is that, okay, you're going to fall short here and I'm going to make up for it. So can but, I just say something really quick? I, yeah. I literally know women married to gay men. Yeah. Like, I'm not even it's saying, true, true. like, I'm not, like, no, I just, true. we just had this conversation. It's a very private matter, but I will tell you that there's women that are married to gay men. They're the beard of gay men. And this is a very small example. I'm not saying this to like be scared of men. I'm not at all. Okay. Because the reality is that as humans, uh, God made us so that we are in a partnership so that we procreate. This is just natural law and order, but there, there is a lot of false sham realities that you see, which actually make you feel less worthy. It also happens to like, it was happening to a friend of mine. Thank God. Now she's on her second child for a while while she struggled to get pregnant and she was married for years already. Um, she had to leave the internet. She couldn't bear to be on social media because every person around her is posting their new babies and all this stuff. And it was really getting to her because remember, people are always going to pressure you first is why are you single? Right. And then you get married and it's like, when are you having kids? And then you have a child and it's when are you having your second one? And then you say, no, I don't want to have any more. Oh, you're so selfish. You should try for the third. And then you have the third and it's like, well, you have three girls. Why don't you try for the boy? Right. You got to try for the boy. So then your kids get then old enough kids and then it's like, what are your kids going to make you right, a grandkid? Exactly. And then you start the entire and then the cycle, cycle so all over people again. People are never going to be, um, Satisfied. satisfied. I want to make a life. to that point. I want to address this comment. Um, Ruben and Ruben, I'm just pointing it out. I know you've been very active in the chat. I'm just pointing out your comment. He says that automatically makes her trashy to a high value man. Actually, no, it doesn't. This is RP logic. What? What makes you trashy? She and my friend, the one that dated the drug, the drug dealer. Now this makes her trashy to a high value man. This is what the RP gets wrong. Yeah. When a man, when a woman has the ability to make a man feel like a king. Like he's the only man in the room. Like he's the most valuable man in the room, no matter if he's just a crypto bro. When a woman has the ability to do that, a man yeah. doesn't care. Like I know that you want to think in, in in this philosophy where it's like, well, when you really sit down and think about it, they're going to look down and they're going to take notes. And she did it this guy. And that makes it she loses her value. They don't care, bro. They don't care. That's exactly why Logan Paul is wifing up a girl that's probably a hoe. Yeah, because they don't care right. because it's irrelevant. It's about how that woman makes him feel. I said it on the on on the uh, pop, uh, on the podcast last week that we were on. Uh, men don't care, and the reason for that is a lot of the reason why hoes win. You guys know that we feel very strongly about hoes winning here, not because we want hoes to win. As because good we women, lost we've lost to hoes, to hoes before. We've seen this. We've seen this. One of the re we've lived it. One of the reason why hoes win is because hoes know how to make men feel special. Hoes have a lot of experience with men, so they know how to rub their backs when they get home, make the meals, have the snacks, do the little things, whatever. Hoes have experience and they know how to make a man feel special. It's why for eons and eons and eons, since the beginning of time, I was talking about it with Linda the other day, in the 1800s, we had courtesans. For those of you that are unaware on what courtesans were, they were high level prostitutes, but men didn't just go to them because they wanted to sleep with them. They were hookers that you could go to for that. Men wanted to pay more money to be in the company of courtesans because courtesans were educated women. They were women of arts. They knew how to dance. They knew how to sing. They knew how to play instruments. They knew how to write and read and talk about art. And they knew how to make the man feel special and engage in good conversation. And these men would pay extra money and hang out with these courtesans that they couldn't leave their wives for, but though they wished that they could have because hoes know how to treat men. So this idea, I understand that in this perfect, and, and I'm, I'm talking a lot about the RP space. A lot of these very men that are like, oh, we don't date hoes. And let's take, for example, a guy like Myron. And it's not to knock on Myron, but Myron spends all the time. Women are horrible. Women are hoes. Women are hypergamous. Women are whatever. But he dates Instagram models. He dates bottle girls. He finds girls on sugar baby sites. So what's really going on here? Is he dating the kind of woman that he claims men should be dating? Or is he experiencing the kind of woman that he continues to choose time and time after time? Which yes. goes back to the other conversation right. about compatibility. 
Yeah. Because a virgin with her, like the ones that Linda and I saw that are praying in their long skirts and their thing and their modesty, a virgin would never have anything in common with a character like Myron in his Fresh and Fit podcast with his 50 weekly like hoes that he has on the lineup. Virgin. I'm actually a real virgin would never, a, a real virgin not? would never be able to put up with that. And this is where compatibility is very important. So who is Myron going to date? Probably a girl that understands his lifestyle, which is probably going to be the opposite of the kind of woman that he tells all of his followers that they should be looking for. I also don't believe, and we, we got to wrap up here soon. It's yeah. 1139. But I also don't believe um, that we are in such a horrible situation when it comes to birth rates and everything. And I'm going to tell you why. Because... The Illuminati and the lizard people know very well how to screw with our psyches and they know very well. They're the best marketers in the world. These are the these are the creators of the Rona. These are the people that were able to convince uh, a lot of the population, more than half of the world population, that if they breathe next to a person, an invisible virus was literally going to kill them. There's still people wearing masks. So I tell you this because the reality is that they tell the liberals that they're going to die from a natural catastrophe because of man-made climate change. And then the right wing, the conservatives, who are obviously more worried about family, the nuclear family, the extension of people, they make them worried and they, they make them believe that no one is having children. Look around you. We live in a very liberal, non-traditional, allegedly city. Everyone around us is having children. Liberals, conservatives, everyone. I don't, I don't, I don't understand this because even the most liberal people that I know or Democrat people that are know, and even if they don't have children right now, they're pretty pro family. They're pretty yeah. pro. I'm going to have kids. There's not a single Democrat or so I, this, this whole reaction for the right seems very manufactured. Um, yeah, I think it's yeah. just a lot of fear porn that, uh, I, and, and again, I want to make I want to make a clarification here. This comment says, "No way, the average man doesn't care if he shows up to a function knowing five dudes that were already ran through her." I agree with her. Of course, a guy would care about that. I, this is why we value purity too. We think that women, probably for different reasons, not which Linda said it best yesterday. Purity is a valuable commodity for a woman. You don't want to sleep around with a lot of men. Mm. That's only going to lead to you getting your heart broken, being in bad situations, Attachment. attachments, giving away your energy, soul ties. You don't want to do that with just anybody. So I agree not to mention this kind of embarrassing situation where you definitely don't want to be the woman that walks in somewhere with your boyfriend, your husband or whatever, and you've slept with many men in that room. But a woman that had uh, Nina Agdal, for example, who's 31 years old and had a lot of the pictures that they've posted of her are pictures with the same guy that she dated yeah, for a very times. long time. Nobody cares about that. Like, no guy's thinking like, damn, this girl that I'm really into, that's great to me, that 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 I'm really falling in love with. Oh, she had three ex-boyfriends. Yeah, I guess I'm going to call it quits now. No one in the real world thinks like that. No now, unless you're an 18-year-old, and I get it under that under that pretense, and maybe what you're concerned with is, is my girl a virgin? You're in high school. I, I get that. But grown up, like grown people, man, they're not thinking about these things. They're not what what's important to a man is how special the woman ultimately men will end up with the woman that makes them feel the most special. It's why you see ugly guy, why you see hot guys with ugly girls sometimes. Because those girls know how to make him feel like a king. Those are the ones that are doing the little back massages, cooking, cleaning, doing the thing. Not to say that pretty girls aren't doing that either, but it's not about women. It's about for that particular man. What woman that he has access to in his life, because it's not just I'm going to go on the Internet and pick the hottest one. It doesn't work that way. No. You're confined to the access that you have within your vicinity. And out of all of the women within that vicinity, which one makes me feel like a king? Clearly a woman that if you walk into a room, she's been with five other men that you know of doesn't make you feel like a king because walking into a room and knowing the five other guys banged your chick doesn't make you feel like a king. Obviously, it's why there's no a lot, a lot of respect for the only fan girls, because you know that there's thousands and millions of men looking at her freaking chachis. And of course, that's not going to make you feel like a king. But nine times out of 10, bro, a man is going to end up with a woman that makes him feel like, wow, I'm I'm the prize. This woman made me feel like I'm like I can take over the world. 
Let me show them before we go. I actually have the video of the virgins, and I want to. I want to. I want. I want you guys to look at this. The place that hides me from the eyes of those right who here. seek to hold the body and not the heart. In here, right? It is not shame that keeps me covered. It is dignity and honor. It is not insecurity that keeps me hidden. It is that I have already been made secure. A man cannot add to this validation or take away from it. And I do not dress to glorify my own body. I dress to glorify my king. There's a plethora of women. A lot of them. I think that about wraps it up. We can. So, you know, that's fine. It doesn't, it, it, the, the audio doesn't matter. D that's fine. But the, mm -hmm. the, the point here is that these are not the type of women that a lot of these men want because they don't have sex appeal. They're not. Not only do they not want them, I want to, I want to specify something else, which I think is even more important. I don't want these women with RP dudes. No, of course not. But, uh, okay. But my point is that they're, they're, the, the complaint, the issue is there's not enough pure women, right. right? Even Pearl was making the point, like only marry virgins because they're not bringing anything else to the table. So at least they can bring their purity. So go. But if you really wanted to, you could totally find these communities, join a church, start living this type of lifestyle, start joining these people and get a bride. Find a good bride. And get a bride. But like, goes, this is not, it's impo not, it's not impossible. This whole mentality that you have to leave the country to find a submissive wife, it's because they're better <laughs> and less westernized. What men really go to Columbia Forest to get blowjobs and do cocaine up of, of girls like booties. Like, this is actually what they go do. They don't go over there to try to wife up the girl from a traditional Catholic family. They're, they're not trying to do that. They're trying to find the baddest bitch at the lowest possible amount of money because if we go back here, where are they? In the limiter whole access. So and, when and they go to passport bros, what happens? That then they get access to women that look like this, like this. because they got their short money in a, in, in a third world country yeah. plagued with poverty buying access to the women that they didn't have access to in this country. Yeah. Um, somebody said that, uh, oh, someone said that that was a bad example. Why is that it's, a bad example? It's not a bad example because the truth of the matter is the bad wait. example is wait, thinking wait, that on. Instagram holes are going to look, that, are, that right. there's going to be, they're gonna be a purity. plethora of purity. virgin Instagram holes. We're talking Let about purity you and modesty. We're by the way, you need, we're, we're talking about simply purity and modesty, which goes hand in hand. When these people are talking about the modern day women, their complaints are about makeup, about indecent exposure mm -hmm. or too much mm -hmm. cleavage or showing themselves on Instagram or bikini pictures. They're talking about hair extensions and eyelashes and uh, BBLs and getting their titties done and the over filters and uh, Botox. These women reject all of that. All of the complaints that these men have about women, the modern day women, these very modest, beautiful women reject that. So it is not a bad example. It's actually the type of women that they describe that a man should have based on purity and modesty. That's what they say that they want. And it's actually so it's not a bad example because you're not going to get a girl that looks like Claudia San Pedro. Look her up. She's in her 30s now. Or Cindy Prado, who's also about 30 years old, or Katia Elise, that's gonna suddenly stop showing her their their bodies on social media because you don't want them to. Because they're getting paid thousands of dollars. To it's do also that. not realistic to again, uh, I don't know where it is that you guys think that this Instagram whole factory is at where all these virgins are being Instagram models. Let me yeah. explain something to you. I'm gonna tell you how I know that fresh and fit has a skewed reality on what it is that they present to men because we are women. Our our show doesn't run the way that fresh and fit does. And we've tried to get married women on here for a panel, oh, like yeah. serious. Um, conservative married women on here for a panel. And you know what happens? 
They don't come. They don't. Their husband said no. They don't feel comfortable. They rather not. So I know that the reality of what the of what shows like Fresh and Fit put out are not real because they they the women that they need on there talking about these realities to prove to them like it's just not real. I don't experience that would never go on that show. They would be caught dead before going on that show out of respect to their husband. I wouldn't be caught dead going on that show because why would we want to be around these hosts? But anyways, guys, we got to wrap it up now. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And if you want to donate to the Most of People podcast, you can do so through the Super Chats or also PayPal, which is linked in our bio. Remember that we are self-sustainable. No Illuminati, no lizard people. Stay tuned because we are working on a new production. Turn and on the notifications, please, guys, notifications. because um, we, we're, we don't really have a set schedule other than Thursdays at this time. Yeah. Um, we don't really have a set schedule as far as what other days we go live, what the production looks like. So please turn on the notifications yeah. so that you know when something is going on with us. If you like our show, help us grow, like, share our content, snippet, and we will see you guys next week. Thank you for being with us again. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a great night.